Hey guys, welcome. So if you watched the previous video on how to install Cura, you should have Cura installed already on your computer. Um, this video we're going to show you real quick how to uh, use some of the parameters and basic uh, tools that they offer to slice your STL file. So you're going to open up Cura. Actually, I already have one open. And you're going to want it to go to, if you do not have a printer, uh, you don't have to go to this setting, but if you do have a printer, you're going to want to go to machine settings, go to add new machine, next, select your printer, uh, depends on the manufacturer, for most printers you'll probably end up going to other, and you'll be selecting, depending on the manufacturer and their instructions for Cura, you're going to have to select your particular printer, for me it's the Prus Mendel i3, very uh, common printer, or style of printer. And then you're going to have all the parameters for the bill plate, the extruder count, the flavor, all this. You might need to change these. Some of them, you might not. Um, but once you have that, that's your, you have selected your machine, the Preston Mundell. So, uh, the first thing you're going to do uh, in order to take your, uh, your solid from SolidWorks into Cura is take your, create a solid in the, in the SolidWorks um, and then go to save as and you can either put it in the same place or wherever you like wherever you can navigate and you're going to go to anywhere you want to save and go to the drop down menu and go to STL file now before you click save go to options and make sure the angle the tolerances for the angle and the deviation are small you can enlarge them if you have a very blocky object it really wouldn't matter now for objects with a circular pattern or helix or any kind of a curve curve like structure you want the angle to definitely be a little bit smaller something like four degrees um, the smallest which i believe is half of a degree you could do but the smaller and the more detailed it is, the longer it takes to load and actually the longer it is to print it. So for our sake, if you have anything curved, uh, try and keep it above uh, four degrees, but four degrees would be a good number. So for this case, we have everything set. And so we save, click yes. You can actually see these uh, individual triangular structures but see for objects like such which are just square it really doesn't matter it's really only for curves that the degrees and the quality or for the tolerance the degrees for the tolerance actually matter so you click yes and you go back to Cura load and we'll navigate and there it is the one we just saved open it and there it is that is your your actual part um, in a one-on-one -on -one scale in comparison to whatever this build plate is measured at. So let's say for instance someone comes in with a part that is, let's say this is too large and we want it to be smaller. Cura does offer tools to do so. Uh, you can actually manipulate it to make it ovular or very long by unlocking the uniform scale and essentially clicking in your parameters. Obviously any tolerances that you had in SOLIDWORKS will be lost because now uh, the measurements and parameters are much different. But if you keep the uniform scale and you go to scale at any one of these X, Y, or Z, you can enlarge it three times smaller. You can make it half its size by pressing 0.5. You can make it 10% its size by pressing 0.1. Obviously, this is way too small and wouldn't be able to be printed. But this is a good size. So there's many parameters up top that can manipulate the... Uh, the actual speed of the printing. There's actual speeds for the, uh, the head which if they're at 50 millimeters a second, which is what we tend to do, um, we'll actually create a very uniform um, printed part. You can go to shell thickness as well. That's very important for the top and the bottom. Usually something above 1, 0, 0, 0.8 millimeters is strong enough. Uh, the layer height also is, uh, helps determine. We have temperature, we have this and that. However, for speed, really it's dependent on the layer height, the shell thickness, the bottom thickness, fill density, and the travel bottom and fill top layer speed. Anything above 50 millimeters a second is not recommended as it could decrease uh, the actual uh, reliability of the stepper motors, especially when they overheat after a certain amount of time. But I hope this video was very helpful and let us know if you have any questions.